Valheim, an incredible survival game where you can build Viking villages, sail to the ends of the world, and fight epic enemies. A game with near infinite possibilities and so much to do. And today we are going to be talking about the 10 must-have areas in your base. Why, why are there wolves in the fuck? Uh, okay, who put wolves in the farm? Sorry about that, but yeah, today we're going to be discussing the 10 must-have things in any starter base. Let's go. 10. The main resting area. As you can see, we have a primary area where we have all of our beds. We have a fire so that we can sleep in them at nighttime. We have our trophies all over the walls. And we have rugs and whatnot to ensure that the comfort level is higher in this area. We also include our personal chests, so if I open mine, you'll see that I have some food and some gear that I'm stocking up for later. Having a personal area is great for uh, personal storage, so you can keep track of your own items that you want to keep separate from the community storage, and also just to provide you a nice little place to relax. 9. The Outer Defenses for us, we have a wall made partially of palisades and partially of stone at our gates to defend us from possible intruders and invasions. We also have boards that we can stand on to fire arrows at our enemies, as well as moats to ensure that enemies cannot just approach our walls and kick them down, but rather have to go through our fortified entrances. We also utilize wards so that we know when a certain portion of our base is being attacked, we'll be pinged and notified. And on the other side of our base, as you saw, we apparently have wolves that are just running around killing everything in sight. I guess we'll mark that down as base defenses as well. 8. The Cooking and Consumables Area We have placed a building in the center of our massive city at this point, which allows us to cook food that we need to create advanced recipes through the cauldron, where we can store these powerful foods for if we go on adventures such as fighting bosses or going into high level zones. And we also keep our distilleries here for if we need to create in-game combat potions called meads. Some of these meads will give you bonus status effects for combat, but the most important ones early will be poison resistance for the swamp and frost resistance so that you can go into the mountains until you get your wolf cape. 7. The Crafting Terrace here is where we have all of our crafting stations, as well as our crafting upgrades, so that we can repair our gear, build new supplies and gear, and prep ourselves for adventures. We also have our storage cubbies, where most of our materials are separated and organized, so that we can find what we need to craft very quickly. This crafting terrace allows us to smelt ore and create charcoal using wood, and then convert it into usable gear and consumables. 6. The Port Now I strongly advocate that your main base be partially facing either the ocean or an inlet that will allow you to get to the ocean. The ability to sail materials in and out, specifically ores and metal bars that cannot be brought through portals is incredibly important. Here we keep our boats and we have a down ramp to easily access them so that we can bring ore and bars in and out of our capital city. 5. The farm area. Your farm area will not likely be infested with wolves like ours, but we have a psychotic teammate who insists on guarding everything with wolves. Anyway, here is where we keep our beehives where we can create honey to use in powerful food items as well as meads. We also keep an area where we can create Carrots, carrot seeds, turnips and turnip seeds, and other various farming items. This is crucial for ensuring that our food is always powerful, and we can turn these items into end-game consumables so that we can fight the bosses as well as go into the more dangerous biomes. Oh, but look at this one. It's a cute little wolf cub. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be mean. This is actually so cute. You can be my friend. 4. The Breeding Area As I'm sure you've figured out now by the heavy wolf presence around our base, 
you can capture, herd, and breed animals. This is incredibly useful as they will multiply. So when you do actually decide to call the herd, you'll be able to get plenty of meat, leather, and whatever else you may need from these animals. We recommend that you keep these animals in more of an enclosed pasture, as you can see here from our boars. It's probably just better for everyone involved. 3. The Portal Hub Portals in Valheim are some of the most amazing tools available. It allows you to link up two locations anywhere on the map so that you can quickly travel so long as you are not carrying items such as ore, metal bars, or the dragon eggs used to summon motor. We have three levels set up for our portals and we have a couple other portals throughout our base. Having a distinct portal hub that you can go to to link yourself to other parts in the map very quickly is an incredibly useful tool when you are farming or trying to find specific materials. 2. The road system. Again, I I ignore the wolves, just pr pretend that they're not everywhere. But the road system is an important piece to ensure that you can easily navigate from base to base in different areas throughout your central world. You'll be using portals and ships to navigate to a lot of the outer world, but these roads are excellent to ensure that your carts can safely move from base to base, shipping ore and other potential materials, without breaking or having any difficulties. I still cannot get over this wolf cub. Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh my god, he just howled at me. He's so cute. And finally, number one. Decorations and flair. Remember, it's a game, not a second job, or a third job, or a fourth job. You should be having fun. So make sure that you're building beautiful things that are for you. Not necessarily to serve any purpose, but sometimes just build to build. Make your base look nice and pretty, add some crazy stuff here and there. Make it feel like an in-game home. Alright, that's going to wrap it up. That's our 10 tips for things that you must have inside of your base. Hope this helped you, hope you learned something new, and we'll see you next time. Oh, hey, I, I didn't see you there. Wow, you watched all the way to the end. You madman. Thank you, I appreciate that. Now I know normally this is where people say don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring those bells, but I'm gonna try using the reverse psychology approach. Don't like, don't subscribe, don't ring that bell. And whatever you do, do not go to Twitch and look up Captain Rob Games.